Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flytrack. Today I will start a new and very interesting project. I will build my own CNC router. <music> Nearly five years ago I've bought plans to build a CNC router called Solidus. You can buy these plans from the website I've linked you down in the description. You will get a full set of building instructions and materials and cut list, as well as drawings of every piece you'll have to build. The instructions are written in German and English. Because this is a really big project, I will split the video in several parts and today we'll show you the build of the Y-axis. It starts by building the Y-axis frame and the first step was a big cutting session to get all the required pieces. All parts are sanded before assembling. When you build this machine after the original plans, it comes with a working area of 30 by 30 centimeters. And I thought about what I wanted to do with the machine and mostly I think I will produce the panels with it. And so I thought what will be the biggest panel I will have to produce and beside of the MIP, which I won't produce in one piece, the next biggest panel will be the MCP panel. And this comes with a width of approximately 47 centimeters. And so I plan to have a working area of 50 by 30 centimeters. And so I had to increase the uh, y-axis by uh, 20 centimeters. But with this kind of machine, where the working area moves instead of the portal, every centimeter of working area you get on top, you have to increase the y-axis by the double time. So when I want to have 20 centimeters more working area in the y direction, I have to extend the whole machine by 40 centimeters. And though I cut all the pieces of the y-axis 40 centimeters longer and also got longer linear guides and ball screws. The positions of all the holes can be taken from the plants. The dado is cut into the side walls in two passes. These two stripes will be connected together at the side of the y-axis. And so these holes will get through both of the pieces. And instead of marking and drilling them separately, I will connect the two pieces with some double-sided tape mark them on one piece only and drill them to both of them. Mm -hmm. 
another data for the cable of the limit switch is cut to the inner piece. Adding a little bit of glue prevents the pieces from sliding away while you drill the pilot holes. One end side gets a dado for the motor cable. The three end pieces also have the outer hose all at the same place. So I can stick them together and drill all the hose at once. The entry for the motor cable has to be chamfered to save it. The motor and limit switch cables are guided through the end plates. Then I started the building of the Y carriage. I've turned around piece number 2.1, the superficial layer, and piece 2.2 and we'll stick them together with some double-sided tape. And so I can see the centers of these holes here and drill through all the three plates in one process with an eight millimeter drill. And now I made this mistake I was afraid of. Of course, you shouldn't drill through all these three layers here, and especially through the bottom plate here. Because if you drill through this bottom plate here, dust could come through the holes to the mechanics of the CNC. These holes of the bottom plate only should drill about seven millimeters deep in. So, now I have to make a new one and drill it again. A cutout was made to reach the ball screw nut for the later installation. I finished the edges of the cutout on the router table but it is good enough to make this just with a jigsaw.
when you build your machine you should definitely build this guiding piece here separately from this plane because now the bottom holes are so near at this plane I can reach here uh, with a drill or a screwdriver and I have to improvise a little bit but you can definitely make this better. Two coats of varnish are applied before installing the mechanics. These limit switches should be mounted with two screws to the side of the frame. But I wasn't able to find any screw that small here in the local stores, beside some online places where I had to pay for the times of the price of the screws. So I decided to make it another way. I used two nails that fitted through the holes and marked the position. Then I hammered them in and cut off the heads. Then I pushed the limit switch over them and to prevent it from sliding back again and to be able to remove it later if necessary, I fixed it with two drops of hot glue. In the building instruction you will find a best practice description of how to install these rails and the Y carriage. You will start by installing this rail here and tighten it parallel to this side of the frame. As you can see, this is really easy. You should clean up the guides before further installation and lubricate the bearings as well as a ball screw. Put the second guide in place, but don't fasten the screws yet. Install the support units of the ball screw. Put the ball screw in place, but don't fasten the screws. Set the carriage in place without fastening the screws and fix the ball screw nut. Now fasten the ball screw supports and screw the carriage to the linear rails. Make the ball screw nut loose and tight again and then fasten the second linear guide. The contact blocks for the limit switches are made from 4mm plywood. A small hint from me, fix them to the carriage before you put it into the frame. This is definitely more easy.
instead of screwing this sacrificial layer with some wood screws into these plywoods here, which would result in some wear out in the future, I think, when you change this layer from time to time, I've installed some additional 4mm nuts beside these all 6mm nuts. And so I can fix this layer with some 4mm screws here. To prevent the mechanics from dust, you can build some bellows from a PVC blind. This is also a good opportunity to spend an evening with the family. And here it is now fully assembled. The stepper motor and the limit switch aren't connected yet. I will come to the electronics in a special video. So I have to continue now the build on the x-axis. And if you like what I'm doing, then subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. So I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.